Hey everyone, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Tonight we're going to do a story inspired by me playing some, uh, well, playing Minecraft with my son Oliver. This is episode 116, Trapped Inside a Dinosaur Video Game. You might remember a past episode where the main character went through some sort of crazy storm and made the video game console sort of act up and then sucked the main character inside. Well, that's pretty much all the background you need for this one as well. If you like the episode, don't forget to share it or rate it. It really goes a long way. We're starting to get more listeners, but uh, haven't quite hit my goal of 1,000 per episode. Helping me make that happen would be greatly appreciated. And now, on to the story. As usual, just close your eyes and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up in your bed once again. You stretch, move your neck from side to side, and get up. Spaceship flies right in front of you, currently the size of a toy. Good morning. Oh, hey, spaceship. Did you finish rebuilding the dinosaur base? You ask? Yes, the dinosaur base is finished with some interesting improvements. Really? That's awesome. Uh, Did you get the control collars fixed? Yes, Spaceship says. The control collars have been upgraded and will now not be susceptible to such hacking attempts. Well, that's a good thing. You don't want Rex taking those things over again and making the dinosaurs rampage all over the place. Let's go check things out, you suggest. You and Spaceship head outside and out to the shed that's mysteriously still there in front of your house. You open the big sliding shed door and inside you see the portal that can take you to any of the planets that you've put portals on previously. Spaceship activates the portal and it lights up a bright blue color that almost looks like flowing water. You jump through the portal and you're suddenly flying through the center of a colorful tunnel, winding left and right, up and down until you see a light at the end. You fly through the light, open your eyes, and you find yourself standing on the dinosaur planet once again. You look around and you see that the entire fence has been rebuilt. The dinosaur base is once again protected by a huge laser fence and it looks even more powerful than before. All of the little sleeping cabins are fixed up and placed upright. The fireplace is fixed, the replicators are fixed, the barn to the dino ranch is fixed. And most importantly, you see all of your friendly dinosaurs hanging out, grazing in the dinosaur ranch area. Wow, you do really good work, Spaceship. Good job. Thank you. I pride myself on doing a good job. As you say that, you hear a crack of thunder. Things start to get dark around you and you look up at the sky. It looks like a thunderstorm. I hate thunderstorms. I'm just going to go inside for a bit. The rain starts pouring down and you run towards your sleeping cabin. When you enter inside, you see a little apartment building made just for you. Everything looks exactly the same as it did before. Just no longer destroyed from a bunch of crazy dinosaurs running around. You look around trying to decide what to do. You see the play area with all the toys. Eh, it could be something. You see the book area. And as much as you like reading, you're just not feeling like it today. Then, you see the living room area with a huge TV at the front of it. I don't even think I've ever tried using this TV. You say to yourself, you head over to the living room area and sit down on the couch facing the huge TV. You pick up a remote control that's sitting on the coffee table in front of the sofa and you point it at the TV. 
You turn it on and a bunch of little icons appear on the television. There's one to watch TV, one to play games, one to listen to music. Maybe I feel like a game, actually. You click the game on and you grab the game controller that's also sitting on the table. You turn on one of your favorite building games. Wow, this thing is incredible, you think to yourself. You start playing the game, running around, punching trees and that sort of thing, starting to build a little base, a little cabin, and getting everything you really need. But around you, you hear the thunder start to pick up, and you see flashes of lightning out through the window. You head towards the window and look outside, and you see a crazy thunderstorm, but instead of normal colored lightning, this one has green lightning shooting all over the sky. Really strange green lightning, too. It kind of reminds you of something you once saw in space in a past adventure, but you can't quite put your finger on it. You head back and continue playing your game, when suddenly you see a surge of light from all around you. Green lightning must have hit your cabin. The entire thing starts to light up a bright green color. The green moves into the TV and through the video game console and through a wire to your controller and then your body starts to glow green. Suddenly you feel kind of weird and then you feel like you're getting small and then everything around you suddenly disappears. You open your eyes and you find yourself in, well, inside the video game once again, except it's not exactly the same. Strangely, it's as if something made the dino world merge with the video game, and there's dinosaurs roaming everywhere. Well, cartoon dinosaurs anyways. Each one kind of looks like it's made up of a series of blocks. But you see long-necked dinosaurs, triceratops, and even a few different kinds of pterosaurs flying around. This is really cool, but also kind of weird. You look down at your hands, and they're like little blocks or something. What do I do now? In the distance, you see something glowing or flashing, almost as if it's calling you toward it. You start to run towards the little green light, and as you get closer, you see that there's another person standing there, or a blocky cartoon person anyways. You walk up to the blocky cartoon person and you say, uh, hi, uh, who are you? Me? My name's Joe. I am your guide to the dinosaur planet. Uh, okay. Uh, what, what am I supposed to do? Your job is to build the dinosaur settlement slash dinosaur base with all types of dinosaurs. Uh, that's cool. Uh, how do I do that? Well... I suggest that first you make yourself some tools. Try punching a tree. Then use that material to make yourself a workbench. From there, everything should kind of spell itself out. Okay, so my goal is to build a big dinosaur base and then capture one of every kind of dinosaur? That's right. Now, you're going to need this to capture the dinosaurs. The person holds out a big circular object. Above it, glowing words appear. Dinosaur Control Collar. 
You grab the collar out of his hand, but instead of holding it in yours, it suddenly gets sucked into your hand, and almost as if it gets merged with you and your entire being. Dinosaur control collar added to inventory, says a very familiar voice. Spaceship, is that you? Yes, I believe I have been turned into the narrator for your game. Uh, cool. Are you somewhere around here? No, I don't seem to have a physical existence here, but I still can communicate with you somehow. Spaceship explains. Okay, well, I guess the first thing we need to do is build ourselves a home spaceship let's get going you run away from the person and you start looking around for a great place to build whoa the top of that mountain looks cool you see a huge mountain in the distance and you start running towards it oh wait we're gonna need materials you run over to a tree and remembering what the person told you you decide to punch it you punch it and punch it and punch it until it starts to crack in the middle, and then suddenly it kind of explodes, and a little floating block appears in front of you that looks just like a piece of wood, a perfectly square piece of wood. You reach out towards it, and suddenly the wood is sucked into you as well. One piece of wood added to... Inventory, says Spaceship in your head. Okay. Cool. Um, now, how do we turn it into a workbench? First, you must turn it into planks. How do I do that? Just think of the piece of wood coming out of your inventory. You hold your arm out and you think of the piece of wood... Suddenly, it pops out of your inventory and you're holding it in your hand, or it's kind of floating right above your hand anyways. Then, options appear above the piece of wood. One of them says, create four planks. Uh, that one, I guess? You think of the option you want to select, and suddenly the wood jumps up, splits into four and each one turns into a perfectly square block as well. And then, they're sucked into your inventory. Alright. Uh, now how do I create the workbench? Sort of the same way. Think of the planks. You think of the planks and they appear in your hand. Now, imagine merging them into a workbench or crafting table you think of a crafting table and the four pieces of wood begin to glow they then smash themselves together into a square that says crafting table you place the square on the ground in front of you and you walk up to it when you place your hand on the square a huge menu appears in front of you with a whole bunch of different icons, each one representing something you could make with the crafting table. You flip through the icons until you come to a picture of some tools. There's axes and pickaxes and shovels. Hmm, I guess I probably want a pickaxe and a axe. You select the two things. Insufficient materials. What? Insufficient materials? What do you mean? In order to create these tools, you will need sticks and wooden planks. Uh, Alright, I'll go punch some more trees. You go over to the nearest tree, and you start punching it bit by bit, breaking it down taking away one piece at a time until you've absorbed a whole bunch of wooden bricks in your inventory. You head back over to the workbench. 
You put your hand down on it and the icons appear again. First, you select sticks. A whole bunch of wood flies into the workbench and then out of the top of it appears a pile of sticks. You reach your hand out and they're absorbed into your inventory. Cool. Then, the picture of the axe and the pickaxe suddenly start to glow a brighter color, showing you that you now have the materials to make them. You select the axe and you feel some of the materials sucked out of your inventory, into the crafting table, and then out of the top of it appears a perfectly made wooden axe. You wonder how a wooden axe is really going to help anybody, but that's trouble for another time, you figure. You absorb the axe into your inventory, and then you select the pickaxe. Once again, the materials get sucked out of you, through the crafting table, and turned into a pickaxe. With these two tools in hand, you start to gather even more materials. You use the axe to easily break trees into bits much quicker than you could before. And you do it until you have 60 or 70 pieces of wood. It doesn't make a lot of sense to you that a wooden axe can break a tree, but it really seems to work fine so you don't really question it too much. You absorb the wooden axe back into your inventory and pull out the pickaxe. You use the pickaxe to start breaking dirt from around you. A shovel might be quicker, but this'll do pretty well. You break down through layers of dirt and grass, which all get stored inside your inventory. And you work your way down to layers of rock. You start hitting the wooden axe against the rock again and again and again, breaking chunks of it all over the place which once again turn into little perfect squares of rock. You absorb them into your inventory and keep going until you have a whole bunch of them. Once you have all the tools you think you need, you head over to the mountain. You hop up the side of the mountain, jumping from square to square, getting up and up and up until you get to the top. The top is a bit jagged with rocks sticking out here and there, so you will your pickaxe out again and you start to even things out. You break away the little blocks of rock and dirt until you have a nice flat building area. You picture the house in front of you, a little square house that you're going to build, and you will the pieces of rock to come out. Suddenly in your hand is floating a little piece of rock. You imagine the piece of rock making a base of a house, and it slowly creates the base of the house in front of you. You have a strange feeling to lock your idea or your choice into place, and when you do, the rock is instantly transported from your inventory into the layout on the ground that you intended. And there's now a perfect square of rock at the base of what will be your house. You then start to do the same thing with the wood. At each corner of the house, you make a perfect pillar of wood. You fill in the rest of the walls with stone, leaving an opening for a window. You then close in the top of the house using wood creating what could be a second floor in the future. But for now, a square is all you really need. You then go to your crafting table, go through the menus, and you find a door. Perfect! You craft a wooden door, take it over to the house, and put it on the outside. You now have what looks like a pretty good house. And as soon as you finish completing it, a bed appears. Congratulations on creating a rudimentary house. As a reward, we are providing this bed. 
That's pretty cool. You decide it might be time to go to bed when you hear a roaring from behind you. Uh oh. You step outside and look out into the distance, and you see what you're pretty sure is a cartoon Tyrannosaurus Rex walking towards your house. Uh, I'm gonna need some sort of weapon. You run over to the crafting table quickly, you put your hand on it and pull up the menus. You flip through them and through them until you get to a section on the tools again. Oh, perfect. I can make a stone sword. I guess that'll be good enough for now, you say. You click on the stone sword. The materials are sucked out of your inventory and into the crafting table, and a perfect stone sword is created. You grab it off the table, keeping it in your hand. And you decide to go for even higher ground. As the dinosaur gets closer, you run to the back of your house. You will the little bricks of wood to build a rudimentary staircase at the back of it. You hop up the little staircase you've created onto the top of your house. The dinosaur arrives and starts hitting your house with its mouth, but luckily it can't quite get up there. You try to hit it away with the stone sword, but each time it just kind of makes a bumping sound and a flashing motion and goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. You hit it as many times as you can, but it must be barely doing any damage. The stone sword isn't enough. If only you had a control, a control collar, you remember. You think about it in your inventory and a control collar appears in your hand. A perfect circle. Well, here goes nothing, you say. You strike the Tyrannosaurus once more with your sword, and as it bumps away, you use the opportunity to jump up in the air off of the house and on top of the Tyrannosaurus's head. As soon as you land on its head, you turn around, grasp around its neck as tightly as you can with your arms, and slam the control collar down around it. The Tyrannosaurus lights up and its eyes turn from red to green. Suddenly, a saddle appears on its back along with some reins like on a horse. You sit down on the saddle and hold on to the reins and the Tyrannosaurus seems to do anything you want it to do. This is so cool. You cop off the Tyrannosaurus and tie it to a tree. Well, that's probably as good as I can do for one night, you think, looking back at all of it. I better get to sleep and then I'll finish my task in the morning. I probably won't get out of here until it's done, if it's anything like the last time I got stuck in a video game. That is correct, Spaceship says. Thanks, Spaceship. Well, good night. You jump into your bed, and a little thing appears that says, Do you want to go to sleep? Uh, okay. Yes, you press. Then a strange feeling passes through your body, like some sort of relaxing vibration. Your muscles melt away and you start to sink into the bed. Your eyes suddenly become very heavy, and, well, your whole body becomes heavy. You just let your eyes close. You sink down in the bed, and you allow yourself to just drift off to sleep. Good night, everyone. <laughs>